end of last season, we saw them deliver on a promise they made in like first season about your sister. Um, that is where the show for me, I was like, oh, now we're talking about alternative dimensions and whatnot, where perhaps they did not win. Uh, was Did you always know that that was going to be coming into play? Or is that something you open up a script and you're like, ah? Uh, I knew it was coming, absolutely. Um, and, I, and I loved it, because it's such a gift that Abinson gives her, you know, to be able to give her this, this tangible thing of, look, you know, this is possible. There she is, it's possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, and it opens this, this, this perception for her. And, she, um, and that sort of takes us through season three with her sort of the films and her and her realities and you know alternate selves and it's a uh, it's pretty exciting i also quite like the fact that they didn't go too quickly to that in terms of the genre right that they eked out that slowly because it's quite yes. important to really invest in the world that we had established before you start spreading yourself too thin. So I thought it was quite clever It's, of it's important to be like, look at this horrible world yeah, for like a whole exactly. season before you're like, hey, there's a chance there's another world. Yeah, like, exactly, exactly. That, so the stakes are higher. Uh, you uh, come from another world altogether. Ireland. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that place. It's very green. <laughs> What's it like jumping into the something that's been running, jump, leaving something that's been uh, running and, and you got to have fun with and then jumping into another uh, fan or genre related project? Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. has a very certain definite tone and, and Man in the High Castle is quite, quite, quite a bit darker. And it's also 10 episodes, no commercial breaks. I mean, it's just, it's fantastic for an actor because you don't have to, you don't always have to end uh, a scene on like, you know, come back in five minutes kind of, kind of a thing. Illuminate for me. when. You come to Comic-Con, or when you go any place in the world, and you run into fans of The Man in the High Castle. What does the average fan of The Man in the High Castle uh, occur as, feel like? Well, it would be different for you. Yeah, right? it's different for me. I mean, I have told this story before, but I was in West Hollywood, and someone zeke hauled me through a coffee shop window, which was, you know, I think they thought that they were being kind of wry and amusing, right. but I looked away, and then they came out, because they thought the problem was they hadn't zeke hauled with sufficient clarity. <laughs> the, so they came in, and I was holding my kid, and I was like, hey, what are you... And he was like, oh, so inappropriate. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yes, I mean, there is a certain... Um, section of society that I suppose wouldn't get it, but I think it's pretty clear that what we're doing is an anti-fascist thing. And I think in England, Very especially, an older generation really get it as well, especially people who remember the threat of Nazism. It, it plays quite strongly with the older generation as well. It uh, could play with the current generation as well. There's, there's threats all around us.